I love you, man. My kids love you. We all love you. Hello, is this God? Yes, it is. Thank you, God. Thank you for your services. Your wisdom is very much appreciated. Man, I think you are the pimp of men. <laughs> Thank you. But you pimp women, obviously. I listen to you all the time. I love what you're doing on the show. You're an icon down here, man. I love your show. We listen every day. And Dallas, Texas supports the 101, man. <laughs> I really hated you at first. But when I gave you a chance, I learned that I don't have to be polite to women. I can be an a-hole and they will love me for it. I kind of figured, you know, you've been married about three to four times. 17, 18 times, yes. Oh, 17 times. Yeah, 17 times I've been married. Mm -hmm. Oh, so then obviously you were kind of desperate to be in a relationship. Oh, I was, but not anymore. Oh, okay. Now I realize little sluts like you are easily gettable. Oh, okay. I get it. I have a cousin who's uh, dating this loser, and I always tell her that she should drop him. And she's like, well, I love I love him. And I'm like, just do what I do when, I, when girls tell me I lo that they love me. I tell them I love you too, girl, but then again, I love pizza. And then I tell off and get the hell out. I have things that other girls can't offer. What's that? I'm really smart, and I'm really good looking. Really smart doesn't do anything for guys. See, when women talk That's about fine. being smart, it means they're never going to shut up. I do got a woman. She's large, and she's been that way for quite a long time. How big you know is she? I, you know, I ain't weighed her lately, but I, she, she's somewhere between 280 and 300. 280 and 300? So you ought to see when we go to the beach, man. A lot of people look, you know, a lot of people have The laugh. harpoons come out? Once you get old enough to have sexual feelings, you certainly don't have them towards your dad. I believe whatever happened when you were younger later transfers to the people, the men that you have relationships with. I have been with women who literally have treated me like I am their dad. And do you like that? I just like getting laid. Once he found out that she was pregnant and he absolutely was sure that it wasn't his kid, why didn't you grab that bitch by her hair and say, we're going right now to get a DNA test, whether you like it or not? I think love in general is just a root of... Uh, Everyone being weak and insecure. Everyone being dependent and thinking that they need someone and not confiding in themselves. Again, it just pretty much boils down to everyone is just pretty idiotic. Everybody's pretty idiotic. Words to live by there, Ryan. Do you expect a guy to pan on the first date every time? Is, is, is that the deal? Yes, that's the way it should be because I'll tell you why. Because what? Because what do I owe you? No, no, no. Let's no, talk about this. What do I owe you on the first date, sweetheart? What do I owe you on the first date? Are you that much of a loser that you want a woman to pay for you on a first date? I'll tell you, I'll try it the other way. I did live as a loser for about five, ten years, doing the gentleman thing, being the good guy. You know who I always lost to? Some guy who was worse looking than me, who no, treated girls like crap. You want to know why? Because every time you treat a girl like trash, she loves you. When you ignore her, all she does is want to pay attention to you. You know who taught me that? Big Tommy, Tom Likas. There it is, sweetheart. Learn it. Learn it and live it. From Paramount Pictures in Hollywood, it's Flash Friday. Flash Friday has begun. And now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program on this Flash Friday. Headlights on, everybody. Headlights on from across North America, wherever you might be. Headlights on. And ladies, if you see somebody with the headlights on, you know what to do. Display your knockers. Show them your cans. It's that simple. We flash you. 
you flash us. How easy can we make this? Simple as that. If you see a nice pair of cans out there, uh, call us. Let us know where they are at 1-800-5800-TOM. And uh, if you've got a nice pair of knockers and uh, maybe you're planning on putting yourself in a fixed position position, or maybe you're uh, just looking for somebody to show them to, you can call us here at, uh, you know the number, 1-800-5800-866. Thank you so much for being part of the program. Here we are on this spectacular late spring day in Southern California. Did, did it turn summer yet? Wait a minute. It's summer. Yesterday was the official beginning of summer. You know, here in L.A. we get so confused because, not only because we don't have weather like uh, most of the planet where there's four seasons and it gets uh, cold in the winter and warm in the summer, um, our seasons have all been screwed up the last few years. They're just not normal for us. Well, just a few weeks ago, it was 50-something degrees at night. <laughs> right smack down in the middle of spring. It was ridiculously cold. Now ridiculously hot. But I'll take ridiculously hot. That's okay. Just spectacular. Now, you may wonder, what do I do with my free time? And, of course, yes. Do I go out and party? Yes, I do. Do I like to drink? Yes. Do I go out? Yes. Do I party? I do. But last, last night I went home and, uh, yes, and Gary laughed. I made a chicken. <laughs> That's right. And, of course, it wasn't enough that it had been about 88 degrees outside my house, and inside the house, when I opened the door, it was like a blast furnace. I think it was 188 degrees inside my house. <laughs> then I turned the oven up to 450 degrees to preheat it, and I put a six-pound free-range chicken in the oven, and then I got the hell out of there. <laughs> Just left for an hour. It was too hot in there. That's what I did. Sat and made myself some dinner and looked at the view last night. That's what I did. And uh, just a little bit of chemical abuse last night. That's all it took. And it was one hell of an evening. Nobody there, just me. I'll get back into the swim. I'll get back into the chick thing uh, this weekend, you know. But, uh, no, last night it was me and myself, baby. I was loving it. Wide open telephones on the Tom Likas show on this Flash Friday. Anything goes here, anything at all. We can talk about anything that's on your mind. It can be anything we discussed on the air this week. Anything you think we should have talked about, you can call up, yell, scream, complain, jump up and down. It's all fair game as long as you're absolutely fascinating. If you're not, and I can hear him from down the hall with my headphones on, I can hear him. Dean J. D'Amelio was the loudest person on earth he will just reject you out of hand if you're not really entertaining if you don't have an edge energy if you don't fit into the target demographic he'll kick your ass before you even get on the air with me you're afraid of me hanging up on you you haven't dealt with the screener yet dean has been our bouncer now for seven years going into his eighth year can you believe that <laughs> yeah. i have marriages that didn't last half that long that's scary. Anyway, all you have to do is call this toll-free telephone number. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Flash Friday, baby. Tom. 1-800-5800-TOM. 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 I was passing downtown on the 10 freeway going east, and I got flashed by jailbait. Not one, but two. Oh, my God. I almost rear-ended the person in front of me. For people that don't have stickers, patience is the key. It will reward you. Oh, Tom, thank you for inventing Flash Friday. I love you. It's Flash Friday on the Tom Likas Show. 97.1. KLSX. Free FM. The Tom Likas Show, Flash Friday. 
800 tom is our telephone number. Eric on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Doing great. Great to hear. I just had a question for you. Yeah. What do you think of the impression those two ass clowns, Conway and Whitman, do on you? Well, uh, put it this way. I don't think they're doing it so much anymore. Oh, really? I, I caught their show yesterday. I never listened to them because they're just awful, to tell you the truth. They're awful. So I never listened to them, but I caught them yesterday, and it was just irritating and annoying, and I just wondered what you thought. Well, my opinion of people doing impressions of me is that it's flattering, and I, I don't have a problem with that per se. Mm -hmm. What I have a problem with is when they do an imitation of me, but they don't have any material. They don't have any jokes. Exactly. They don't have any content. And when I turn on the radio and I hear a bit, which is supposed to be a senile, drunken, sickly version of me, sitting there just laughing all the time and never saying anything for an hour at a clip, I don't think that's very funny. I just don't think that part's funny. Now, if you got jokes, if you got bits... Fantastic. I, I Use me any way you like. Use me and abuse me. Right. But, but I, I just want it to be funny, and nope. just doing somebody's voice doesn't make you funny. Exactly. They they, they missed the mark, but just uh, called to ask you that. Uh, could you take me out with a big old bong hit? You bet I can. All right. Thanks a lot. There you go. Here comes Martin on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Martin? Yes, Tom. Yeah. Oh, my God. I got to thank you from the bottom of my heart. What happened? Driving down Hollywood, I believe, no, a sunset in Highland. I have a nice ride. It's about a 2007 Maxima. Just got it, no more than four days ago. And I look to the right. Girls look in the car. They're, they're hitting it hard. They're turning their head. I look over, my, my high beams are up. Look over, set of girls, the youngest rack I think I've ever seen. I think it's at least, I'm 25 years old. These have got to at least be 19, 18 year old girls. Oh, keep in mind, you you were right across the street from Hollywood High. Yeah. Well, me, I'm new to the area. I was just driving to pick up a friend, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> they're, they're on the street. This is the main street, Tom. I gotta thank you because this is great. Wow! How do you have to get a girl drunk, or take her to a party, or take her home to see a, to see her rack? But no, on the street, I don't know what you're doing with these girls, Tom. But you keep it up because these guys out here are loving it. My friends, listen to you now. Listen to you over a year now, and this is great. You're doing a great job. Keep it up, Martin. Let me ask you one final question. If you were listening to KLOS in the afternoon, would you be seeing bare, nineteen-year-old breasts at the corner of Sunset and Highland? I'd be sleeping at the wheel. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. Thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM on this Flash Friday. Richard, hello. Hey, Father. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I called you a few weeks ago, if you remember me. I'm the poor guy on SSI. Well, you're not the only one. <laughs> We've had a few call in here. Yeah, but I'm like six thousand dollars in debt. And oh, stuff. I see. All right, and what did I tell you to I, do? I know. Don't be spending it on girls. But right. I didn't listen. Uh huh. But I'm going to be moving out of state soon. And what difference is that going to make? I don't know. I see. Yeah. It's now, hard. It's hard to get any tail when you only get SSI. Well, yes. Uh, not only because you only get SSI, but because of uh, whatever disability you might have when you're on SSI, uh, that could get in your way. Yeah. Right? And I heard you talking to some guy yesterday about driving by a building and telling him you own that building or or something. Yes. If you don't even have a car, they're not going to believe that when you uh, don't even have a car. Well, when you don't have a car, you have to say that your Maserati's in the shop. <laughs> Oh yeah, I remember you saying that too, Tom. Of course. Well, when you take me out, can can you take me out if you can do it this way, Michael Jackson style, with the thank you Jesus and Compton style. 
That's a very busy one there, Richard. My greatest inspiration comes from kids. Why can't you share your bed? There was some action going on in my room every night. Who's the criminal? Who's, who's Jack the Ripper in the room? Thank you, Jesus! Biatch! 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Zindy. You like Zinfandel, Zindy? Hi, Dad. How are you? Doing great, dear. I missed the whole show this week about the, you know, welfare recipients, but I, you know, I'm, I'm a blue collar girl. I don't make much money a year. I make like 2,600 a year and I have to purchase. No, 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 no. You don't make 2,600 a year. You make 26,000 a year. I'm sorry, thousand. I'm nervous. I'm on the phone with you, but you know, if we you knew how to count, if you knew how to count, you might make more. Care. I'm sorry. I'm Darling, let me ask you a question. Sure. Okay. Here I go. I'm in trouble. God bless America. Here you are in the land of opportunity. Um, how do you end up making $26,000 a year? How about school? How about studying? I'll tell you how, Tom, by not listening to you sooner. So let me guess. Uh, rather than going to school, you had a boyfriend or something like that, a husband, a live-in, something. He knocked you up, which you were perfectly happy to have happen because you see it all around you. Got it, Dad. <laughs> you got it. I know you're typed here. Yep, 19 with a kid, and, you know, do nothing, you do what I have to do and go straight to work. And uh, he works nights, I work days. We have nobody to take care of the kids as far as, like, grandma, grandpa, you know, everybody works. So you have to go to work. But, I mean, I can consider myself, I, I feel more proud of myself than compared to some people that are my age. And, you know, they, at their age, they were welfare recipients, yet I'm over here working, trying to make as much as I can. And they get the free child care because they're welfare recipients. And while I'm budgeting my grocery costs at the grocery store, here they are buying shrimp and steak and, you know, the Twinkies and the sodas. And I'm, you know, making sure I just have the vegetables and, you know, my my pastas and whatever is necessary. Yet they're walking out with two grocery carts full of anything they want to eat. And my thing is how the government doesn't realize that that's a problem and that's our taxpayers' money that's going to their stomach and they don't make them have like certain foods that they can buy just nutritious foods for their kids well part of this is of course the age-old problem that uh, uh there are people in special interest groups uh who see a program like food stamps as a way of subsidizing american businesses keep in mind the food stamp program was created not to feed people it was created to subsidize farmers who had excess produce i never knew that dad yeah. And what gets me now is now they don't even have food stamps, like the the stamp, the, the checks, they don't have those. Now right. they even have these credit cards, which they're not embarrassed to buy the groceries because all they do is slide the card. And, right. You know, they, I don't feel that they have any pressure to get off of the system. Well, of course not. By the way, uh, keep in mind, think about this. Ever wonder why food stamps come from the Department of Agriculture? And not the welfare department, you know, Department of Social Services, whatever. Why do they come from the Department of Agriculture? It's because it's supposed to be a subsidy for farmers. I I always wondered. I I'm glad I called you. It, it just it really annoys me, um, to you know, to know that they can get whatever they want to eat. And even though I feel that it's a cycle, because um, unfortunately, I I have the peace of mind of knowing that by the time that their children reach the age of 15, 16, and those five hundred dollars, you know, of cash that they get and the three hundred dollars that they get of of you know, food stamps runs out and those children start seeing, hey, my parents don't make much money. The kids are in high school while all the other students are getting yearbooks and prom outfits and going on field trips and movies with their friends. They start seeing, wow, I'm really not part of society in this way. And what do they do? I personally think that they hang out on the streets and they look for other ways to have fun because their parents can't afford. Well, keep in mind, these people are the exact same as you used to be before a light bulb went on over your head. Now, how did you change? What changed you? I, my parents always raised us to where we don't receive any type of special benefits from any government. I mean, you work for what you have. We didn't have insurance. We just didn't have insurance. We never applied for any type of Medi-Cal or expected anybody to pay for our prescriptions. I mean, my parents, if my 
parents had to buy me any type of prescription drugs, yes, they would take me to a doctor, but they would pay cash. Yes, they would take me to the dentist, but they would pay cash. And they would have to pay for my prescriptions. I never expected for anybody to pay for my prescriptions as far as any other taxpayer. And yet I see these people come and they have their, you know, their medical insurance costs are paid for because they have Medi-Cal. They don't have to pay for prescriptions because you know, the government pays for them. And when they go see the doctor, they don't have to pay copayments because that's not part of their insurance. Yet they walk out of the same park, medical parking lot that I walk out of, and they're in Escalades, Navigators, and, you know, I'm in the Honda Civic. Yeah, I understand, darling. I understand. But by the same token, uh, how did your parents react to you, uh, the, you know, uh, printing out a Xerox copy of yourself at 19? Um, yeah, exactly. My mom... My mom, of course, wanted me to have an abortion. Um, my dad said, don't get married. You don't know who you are. You don't know who he is. You guys are barely beginning to live your life and know who you are as a person. You have so much more to live. My father said, do me a favor and don't get married. They were both right, weren't they? They were, Tom. They were. And I, I listen to you every day. And if I could, ex if I could express myself to you know, millions of other teenagers out there and, and tell them, yeah, you know, your parents are right and they don't know how to explain it to you other than you're going to mess up your life. You know, th th it's so hard to explain until they say until you live it. That's why and, I call myself the dad you never had. Because... And you are the dad we've never had because until you live it, that's when you realize, you know, and it doesn't hit you at 18, 19 because you're big, big obviously like, you know, ignorance is a bliss at some times, but when you're 20, 23, 24, 25, and all your other friends are in college and they're taking off to Vegas and they're going to Cabo San Lucas and, hey, you're at home taking care of a kid and having to find a $12 an hour job. You'll be going to Cabo, you know, you'll be going to Cabo when you're 38, 39 yeah, years old. Exactly. And that's only if you don't have more kids. Which I won't. <laughs> <laughs> but... Thanks, Tom, for answering my question because it, it just really aggravates me to see them get away with so many costs that we're working so hard to, you know, pay for. And and nobody put my children, you know, nobody gave me these children and said, oh, here, you know, this is your, you know, now this is, this is your cost now. No, I chose to have them, but. How many do you have? I have two children. You had two? Mm-hmm. Holy cow. Yeah, but we support our children. We pay for our child care. We pay for our groceries. We I pay... understand that, but you know what? You gave up a career. I did, Tom. I did, and I know it's never too late to go back to school. Yeah, um, it is. And I'm looking forward to that. Unfortunately, right now, and what are you going to do tonight, that when, you're, when you're 40? Are you going to do that when you're 40? No, I'm going to do that. So hopefully in two years. Hopefully. When he's back on days and I can go to school. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. What do you do for a living, dear? I work at a medical office. What does he do? He's at a print. He works at a printing press. He's a pressman. Yeah. Neither one of you went to college. No. Nope. Mm-hmm. And you thought this sounded like a good idea at the time. It was a splendid idea at the time. Would you please it tell? It wasn't even an idea. It was just happened. No, no, it didn't just happen to you because you had sex exactly. without birth control. It didn't just happen. You made it happen. I did it. I opened my legs and I let it happen. So. Right. You're right. And you, 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 you must have wanted to have a baby because you didn't use birth control. I must have. I must have been looking for love in all the wrong places and thought that I was going to fulfill that void in my heart somehow in that way. But Would you please wrong. talk to all the other fertile 18-year-olds out there who are thinking <laughs> about doing what you did? Would you tell them? Would you tell them what whether you think they should do that or not? Oh, yeah, no. I, I Every teenager that comes my way, I try to be, you know, a peer advocate or, or some type of role model, but not tell them the way that parents tell them, hey, you're going to mess up your life in this way. Just say, hey, it's a really rough responsibility and you're going to lose a lot more and this is what you'll lose out on. And you're not going to have that ability to date and meet different people. And, you know, I always tell them, you have to have that one guy that that uh, likes to watch movies and you have to have that other guy that likes to go to baseball games and you have to have that other guy that likes to, you know, go camping and you have to have... You have to have the time in your life to say, oh, I dated this type of person and that type of person and that type of person. And then by the time you hit 27, then you're going to say, oh, this is the type of person that I would like to be with. This is the type of person that, that, can, that makes me happy, that makes me happy already, not when you're 18 and say, well, he's going to make me happy. You know, and that's the difference between he's going to make me happy or he makes me happy. But you don't learn that until you give yourself that room 
to date and that time to live and find, like my father said, find out who you are yourself and find out who other people are. And then yeah. when you get when that I get age, calls from people that age, they say, though, when I get calls from people that age, they're all say, always saying things like, oh, I'd already had my fun. No way, Tom. Mm. I have friends that say that till this day. And I'll tell you, Tom, I broke up with my husband for two years and I, I him, he doesn't regret it and I don't regret it because in those two years, we had a break and we were kids. We were kids having kids. And I got to see that, oh, okay, well, this is what a what a bar is like, and this is what a club is like, and this is what dating is like. It, you know, it just, it unfortunately it happened that way because it was so much stress at such a young age that we brought upon ourselves. And now that's why I can tell other people that were in my situation at my age at 18 saying, hey, slow down, take your time. Take your time because you need to find different people to find out what, what it is that you like to be around and you need to find yourself and you need to be in different type of relationships that don't work out. So when you find the relationship that you want to hold on to later on in the future, once you have your career established, you know how to avoid that situation, avoid that argument because you've been in other relationships. But when you're 18 and you jump the gun and you jump into that, you have no experience in a relationship. You are right about that. Thank you for the call. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You know what an engagement ring is, Stephen? It's a symbol. No, it isn't. I'll tell you what it is. It's divorce insurance. This is the Tom Likas Show. 97.1. KLSX. Free FM. The Tom Likas Show at 1 800 5800 Tom on this Flash Friday. 1 800 5800 866. Danny on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? Great. It's good to hear, Tom. You know, I already feel, I already heard your, um, how you feel about the TV, you know, Big Vagina, right? Big Vagina yeah. Box. All right, uh, listen, I wanted to ask you, I, I, I told Dean all the time, if you've seen this uh, Trojan condom commercial about, with the pigs? Yes, the yeah, which, by the way, uh, yeah. was banned. Oh, was it? Uh, a couple of networks refused to run it, including CBS. Oh, really? Yes. Mm. Yeah, I think I've seen it on cable. And, but um, what are your thoughts about that, Tom? About the commercial? Well, you know, well, yeah, what they're trying to say, the message is trying to say, you know, evolve or something like that. It's time to evolve or something like that. Well, they're trying to say that guys who use condoms are more evolved than guys who don't. <laughs> Basically, you know, condoms, pigs and stuff. Well, uh, clearly that was a commercial for women who buy condoms. Oh, I see. Because in the commercial, when people haven't seen it, right. uh, it's, it's, a, it's a club, like a meat market. Uh, where uh, there's a bunch of chicks there, mostly fairly hot chicks, right. and they're talking to, literally talking to pigs. Right. And then one of the pigs goes into the bathroom and goes to a condom machine and buys a, uh, a Trojan, and uh, he uh, morphs into a relatively attractive-looking guy and then comes out of the chick uh, who didn't like him as a pig really likes him now. Right. So basically, you know, it was intended for females, right? Like you said, to buy condoms. Females who buy condoms, because as you know, uh, with many of the females we talk to, they'd much rather you don't use a condom <laughs> so they can get into your wallet for the next eighteen years. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right, Tom. I just wanted to point that one out. I think. Oh, you think I think what should have happened is he should have gone in, in instead of going in as a big. He should have gone in as a big money bag. And then when the condom comes out, he turns into a guy, and then she's like, "Ew!" <laughs> that would have been much better, right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah, Tom, now yeah. that would have been reality in my world. That's true. <laughs> well, all right, Tony, you blow me up. I'll blow you up, baby. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom is our telephone number on this Flash Friday. Anthony on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Oh, what's up, Tom? Not much, Anthony. Yo, man. Hey, I got a bit. Not, not even a big problem, but I just need some good advice, you know? What was it? I, I called you about maybe a month ago. You, I don't, I'm pretty sure you remember what, about the, where I bought, I bought an ounce. 
and, and I was going to roll a couple of blunts with this girl, remember? We get a lot of people who do that. I, you might be surprised to know, Anthony. <laughs> All right, then, dude. No, but uh, what's it called? Around that, around, what was it? A week before that, my girl broke up with me, right? She said some crap. I wasn't really listening. I really, I, I didn't really care at the time. Well, anywho, that same week, that same week, I ended up, I ended up rolling, rolling some blunts with that girl, a different girl, and like we, we blazed out. I got laid, you know, I got laid. And then what, what is it? Like three, four weeks later, my girl, my ex, my ex, my ex ends up calling me back that. She wants to start dating again and start building a relationship and whatnot. And it's like it's hard to say it's hard to say no. Why because, is it hard to say no? Why do you need a relationship for you're nineteen? I don't know, dude. It's like I, I guess you got no I, game, I, pal. Is that what it is? You got no game. No, it's just the fact that getting laid every other day is pretty it's pretty sweet. It's you not know? but you would get laid you know what? You get laid every day if you got five different chicks that you rotate in. Yeah, that makes sense. Cause right, right now I'm like working working on three different girls, but you know. And then I got every time I'm with with, with one of these girls, she ends up calling me or sending me texts. I said, "What are you doing? Where you're at?" Who cares? That's exactly what you don't want. Yeah. So, well, what do you think I should tell her? What do you think I should do? Tell her you're not ready for a serious relationship, but that if you want to hook up once in a while, that's fine. So, it's, it's cool to have sex with your ex. As long as she's one of a rotation and she's not in love with you and you don't say I love you and you don't call her your girlfriend. Gee, that, that's the problem. She keeps saying I love you. Well, you know, then, I, then I, I, you know what? I'd stay away from that. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know, dude. So, just, uh, why so do you I'm call me for it? You know, if you don't want my advice, why do you call here? No, no, I'm calling. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm trying to say. What do you mean you don't know? Yeah. I'm telling well, you what to do. Yeah, exactly. So, so do I'm it. Not ready for a serious relationship. So just do it. You're tell you're not you're too yeah. young for a serious relationship. You're 19, and she's less. Yeah. That's How true. old is she? Uh, turning 18 in next month. So that means she's 70. Yeah. Too young. Yeah, you're right. That makes a lot of sense. But uh, if she's saying I love you, I'd avoid her like the plague. <laughs> uh, Why are you laughing like a little boy now? No, because that's just funny. You know, nothing funny about it. This is not funny. That, 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 that's, that's the thing that always got got me to go back. Oh, I love you. you know? Yeah, these are the kinds of. Let me tell you something, son. These are the kinds of girls who end up getting pregnant. Yeah. Do you do you want and that? I, and I don't want that. I don't that, want that is, not... who do you think gets pregnant? I don't know. Little girls who say I love you when they're seventeen. That's who. Just to trap you. It's not just right? that they they have no life. They have no future. They're not usually not going to college. Is she going to go to college, Anthony? She says she is. But... Yeah, what college? Uh, I don't know. I don't yeah. really pay attention to her. Well, if she's about to turn 18, she ought to know. I don't know, but I'm, I'm going to Fullerton, Fullerton JC, going to transfer to Chapman University. So I'm already setting my plan, and I don't want to be held back by it. Well, then, what are you doing with, when someone says, I love you, run for the hills? All right. All right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Thanks a lot, huh? Hey, can you blow me up? Yes, I can. gonna do it though i'll tell you right now she's a hot little piece of ass and he's gonna tap that some more until she gets knocked up then he's gonna call me like whoa what do i do now dad what do i do now she's knocked up she just called me she told me she won't have the abortion and now i don't know what to do I'm gonna, i know that call is coming don't even bother calling me if you do that son don't even don't even call me i'm gonna laugh my ass off if you ever call here again and tell me that because i told you so i warned you 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Wide open telephones on this Flash Friday. And Dean is cycling through those calls pretty quickly. So if it's busy, just keep dialing. We'll get everybody in. Stacy on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom. First time caller. How's it going? Great. 
Hey, I caught something since we were discussing counterculture today. I caught something on CNN yesterday morning that I thought your reader or your listeners might want to know about. Apparently, there's a former detective in Texas that published a DVD called Never Get Busted Again, and it discusses and shows tactics and tips for how to transport, how to avoid false positives from drug dogs, and just wanted to see what you thought about that, because it seems like if the rest of law enforcement sees the video, they know what we know. Think it's worth buying? I haven't seen it, so I can't tell you if it's worth buying. I can't tell you. Well, I think his whole thing is he uh, educated himself on the laws and the effects, and now he's apparently a big legalization advocate, so God bless him. I hope more of them come around. <laughs> I'd really rather the law just change rather than people having to break the law all the time. Exactly. I would what? really like to see the law change. There's no reason for pot to be illegal. None. Well, that's his position. He compares it to alcohol and it's like, look, people, it doesn't kill people. <laughs> well, it's true. All right. Well, love your show. Thank you very much. Stacy. thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Jeanette, on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hi, Tom. Thank you for taking my call so quickly. Sure. Um, I wanted to get some advice about my husband. Um, I've always been dating the nice guys, the geeks, the quiet ones, you know, the ones that are usually, you know, pretty honest and trustful. Um, but my husband sees something entirely different. He's pretty much the most, well, I guess chicks would call him kind of dangerous. He says he loves me, but at the same time, he admits that he lies to me to spare my feelings sometimes. And since I don't understand him, he seems to be a pretty devout listener of yours. I was hoping maybe you could help me figure it out. Well, what does he lie about? Uh, it's little things like, honestly, my cooking, and I know that sounds trite. Uh, whether or not he looks at other women, stuff like that. He's a guy. He looks at other women. Well, I know that. I know that. I mean. So why do you ask him a question like that? Honestly, because I'm a chick and I like to hear things that, you know, make me feel good. Well, but you want to hear him say he looks at other chicks? No, I want the truth. But I'm telling you the truth. He looks at other chicks. There's well, no need. To, there's no need to ever ask him that question again. I know. I know. But it's... So why do you ask? Because <laughs> I'm hoping to hear differently. But why are you hoping to hear differently? We are all like that. Yeah, yeah. So why are you... <laughs> I, I don't know. That's that's the best I can explain it. No, no, but... I, I guess that the core of the issue is... You want him to lie to you. I don't want him to lie to me. Yeah, you do, because you, you want him to say he doesn't look at other chicks. If he looks at other chicks, I want him to tell me so, if I ask. No. He, I would like to hear that he doesn't, but... Why do you need I, him to tell you? I just told you. Oh, I know this. But well, hold on. What I wanted this, to know this is a game that you're playing with him. I am not trying to play any game. With it, him. it is a game. You know the answer. When you add, like, it's like when people call here. Let me get. Let's take it out of him and you for a okay. second. I don't know how often you listen to the show. Ever hear one of these wise ass callers who calls up and says, "Hey, Tom, how many times have you been married and divorced again?" Uh -huh. Absolutely, I know these calls. And then I say four. Oh yeah, four. Uh, now, don't you think that person sounds like they're just playing a stupid game with me? Yes, sir, they do. They do. You're doing the same thing to him. Okay, I am. Uh, maybe I am. That's not what I'm trying to do. That's, that's what it is. Okay. You know the answer. Mm -hmm. um, what I wanted to get your feedback on specifically is since he's admitted to lying to me to spare my feelings. I mean, I'm not sure if I can really trust him when he says. Darling, I want you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna refer you to a book I've referred many people to. You must read this book. Mm -hmm. You can get it on Amazon.com. Mm -hmm. It's called Tell Me No Lies. Okay. It's by Dr. Ellen Bader, mm -hmm. Dr. Peter Pearson, and Dr. Judith Schwartz. Okay. Okay. It is a book I own and I have read because I've been in relationships where I was forced to lie to the other person. Mm -hmm. You create an environment where he must lie to survive. Okay. By asking him questions when you already know the answer, okay. like you're quizzing him, you put him in a defensive position. Read this book. Okay. You're going to find out that this is not all about how untrustworthy he is. Some of it is about how you are trying to manipulate him and test him. 
Okay, I, I will admit I am trying to test him. I'm trying to feel out the waters. Stop with the testing because the more you do that, the more he will lie. Okay. Read the book. Okay. Are you saying that I should just stop all the questions and just take it at face value? I'm telling you book? to. I'm telling you, don't be lazy. Buy this book for ten dollars and read it. Okay. And then you will see what I'm talking about. Thank you for the call. It's the Tom Likas Show. Southern California's FM Talk Station, ninety-seven point one.